Welcome to Mad Weight Men Sessions. On this podcast, we'll be joined by a variety of different guests talking about various different topics to do with mental health. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to Mad Weight Men Sessions. Today on the show, we have Jay with us, a member of the Men's With Issue group. So, Jay, um, I'd like to start off the podcast just by asking a wee bit about how you find the group, what you take for it, and just give your views on it. Yep, for sure. Uh, thanks for having me, first of all. Um, the meeting's brilliant, you know, like, seeing boys come and open up is what it's all about, do you know what I mean? That's what you guys tried to create, and, and you've achieved it, you know. Um, I've attended meetings for... For a while, you know, um, different kind of meetings, you know, for a specific thing. And there's people that maybe don't have a specific problem that I have, that don't have access to these things, but still struggle with, you know, that voice in your head or depressive states and stuff like that. So what you guys have done is fantastic and having people that can have access to that kind of place, you know, and, and speak honestly and openly about how they're feeling. That's brilliant, mate. Uh, I like that you touched on that, that... You've been to meetings before, different setting, obviously for different things, and that's the reason that me and Danny wanted to start this. We've been in the same kind of meetings with you as well, but <clears throat> we realised that not everybody has to suffer from addiction to have mental health or have struggles. Yep. So, and we felt that there wasn't a lot of things out there for people like that, and that's the reason we wanted to start this because. You, other people do need help they, just because they don't suffer from addiction doesn't mean they're not sitting there in the rain heat constantly mm. do you know what I mean so uh, I'm glad that you picked up on that and that's a good thing to get across that you don't need to have these other types of issues to be struggling and um, uh, it's, it just helped my broader vi- variety of people I think that's the it's the labelling isn't it it's if if you can't label whatever it is that's happening for you or what you suffer with then, then where do you go but mm. the groups isn't it about sort of I've got anxiety or I've got depression It's it can just be your heat's busting yeah. uh, and you've got a place to come and talk about that mm-hmm. um, what benefit do you see in these meetings what is it that, that happens do you think because there's a magic it seems to happen when, when guys get together and get vulnerable and get honest something yeah. happens in the room yeah. but for your perspective what do you see so I mean for I think it's important um, that Obviously, the meetings that we went to, you know, like, so I'll just put it out there so I'm not, like, airy-fairy over what it is. Like, I'm a drug addict. I attend a 12-step fellowship. Um, and it was the reason that I used drinking drugs that put me into those meetings. But then I found out that it wasn't actually the drinking drugs that were my problem. So then seeing and going through this 12-step recovery process, I've learned a lot about fear, resentment, how my head works. And it's important that guys, like, us can attend because of the knowledge that we've got, you know, and then you've got boys coming in, like you said, they don't know what it is that they suffer from, and you've got boys in there, not even just, like, drug addicts that have been through a programme, but people that have previously had mental health overcame it, so you've got people that are experienced in the matter, have came from a place to a better place, and then you've got boys that are just coming about, some of them don't want to speak, and I hear you speaking about it all the time, it's perfectly okay, but just getting their eyes open, uh, getting their eyes open and getting them thinking that maybe there is solutions to the way that they are they are feeling. And then there are people that are coming that are not even identifying their feeling like that until they come. People are saying, oh, well, I've felt like this this week and that. And then they're like, wow, me too. And then it's like that feeling that I've experienced so many times is like where I thought I was the only person in the world that was going through this, you know, like terminal uniqueness. Uh, nobody's got it bad as me and nobody understands where it's like everybody does everybody does you know it's so important to get that that initial experience of I'm not alone here you know I can get help Aye. Um, so a big thing you say is there people coming and they don't even realise that they've got these things that are or issues so I had a, a pal who comes to the meeting he only came to support me and he's been there every week since yeah. and he says every single week every time I come here my eyes are getting opened wider and wider I'm realising fuck that's I feel like that or I feel like that but this is the thing we're trying to get people think that's just normal yeah. and see if they don't come to meetings like this or attend groups or speak to people like minded people they'll just live their life that exact same way yeah thinking it's normal when it's no like you don't need to be sitting fuck depressed anxious or even just sad you don't need to be sitting like that because if you come to places like this open up let it out 
the way it takes off you and yeah. just knowing what you say is you're not the only person who feels like that. Yeah. You don't want anybody else to feel the same way as you. You don't, but see, knowing that other people do, yeah. it gives you that bit of relief because see when you think it's just you, you're like, oh, you think the world's going to end? Why, why are they all right? And I'm no, you know what I mean? But just having that sense of comfort that there's a group of 30 guys who can all relate to you and all want you to get better. It's, it's just like you say, mate, it's where the magic happens, man. It's yeah. so powerful. It's unbelievable. Yeah, for sure. Um, aye. Yeah. <laughs> so, Jay, what was life like for you growing up then? So where did it all start? You spoke a wee bit about the challenges you faced later in life, but what yeah. was like life like before that when you were growing up? Yeah, so starting off for me, like, my mum would always say, like, you're just the happiest wee boy, you know, he'd get on with everyone and no problems, like, no problems. And I think everyone personally like starts off in that state you know um and then something happened to me I was 13 years old I got diagnosed with cancer um and it was just like the, the game changer like really it was a game changer you know and ended up dying waking up in intensive care and and that's when like this shift happened you know and it's like I'm I'm not religious in any way but the analogy of the angels god and the demons like, I fully believe in that, you know, and, and this is when, like, the devil had taken over, you know, I'd woke up in ICU and a shift had happened and my thinking got was warped for that second and it's like, right, I got diagnosed with cancer and I died uh, and I died and I was focusing on that, you know, like I could only see that. So my view of the world before, which was so broad and so um, innocent, became so narrow and so, don't know what the word I'm looking for is, but it's like I could only hone in on the negatives and, and I feel like I can pinpoint it back to when I woke up in ICU because the fact of the matter is, I'm still here the day I got the all clear, you know, that's over 10 years ago and, and I woke up in ICU, do you know what I mean? Can I focus on the positives and, and, and then going on, um, getting back to school and I, uh, maybe I went back to school a bit early because I still looked like a cancer patient, you know, and I remember walking through the halls of the school and stuff like that and you could just tell people were not sure how to deal with me and stuff like that because I just, I looked ill, you know. Um, I worked out how to navigate my way through it, like, and people started, like, laughing at everything I was saying and this and that, so I became more popular um, and then my story comes with like drugs, you know, drinking drugs and I, I years, years of a career where um, that's all I lived for, you know, um, all I lived for was, was drinking and drugging and, and it took me to, to the depths of hell, you know, I, I found myself because of the way that I used, um, leaving school early, going for college, dropping out, job to job to job to job to job, um, just not really doing much, taking advantage of my my family, you know, just um, playing always, uh, you know, I played on the, the fact that I was ill when I was young, right up until I was, was 21 years of age and, until my life turned around, you know, I could manipulate my mum. Um, very easily, you know, she she slept with me on my, my hospital bed, you know, she didn't know what to do and, and, I, and I've always been her baby and she, she'll still tell me that I'm her baby, you know, and yeah, I, I wouldn't be here without that woman, but the the, the fact of the matter is that I knew how to manipulate and, and take that stuff to my advantage, you know, and I'm in, I'm working in hospitality and, and I'm out all weekend, you know, like started off like it was brilliant, like it's Glasgow, everyone loves drinking, everyone loves taking drugs, like um, it's nothing, it's a secret. Uh, some of us unfortunately just have this this thing, which I believe that I have, is like when I start, um, I'm just not in control of where I end up, uh, how much I take, who I speak to, what I'm saying, all these circumstances I'm just not in control of. Something takes over me, uh, the devil, you know, and and mad stuff happens, you know, that I wake up whenever I wake up and I'm like, how did that happen? I was only going for a pint, <laughs> one pint, you know, <laughs> and I'm out four days later. Then it comes to, like, I find um, taking drugs sober in my work um, and that just took me to a horrible place, like a really horrible place. You can only imagine, you know, two years daily using and um, and there was only one way out. 
you know, this penultimate day came and it's like I'm in thousands of pounds of debt. Uh, I can't speak to anyone. It's like that thing. I can't speak to anyone because nobody understands. Nobody's going through it. Um, so there's only one way out here. And it's like not that I wanted to do it, but there was no other option. There was no other option in my mind. Um, which is funny because it's like it's my head that's telling me that, you know, and that I believe that's where the, the devil lives, you know. Uh, this voice that's in me that's not me that keeps telling me stuff like da 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 all day, every day, man, you know, and I still suffer from that today. Um, the only thing I've got today is like an awareness that I believe that this thing is not me, that lives in me. Um, so I'm going to take my own life um, in the way that I'm going to do it because I'm totally deluded, like in total delusion of life. Like I said, my, my view is so small. Um, it's just so far from the picture and I'm, I'm going to go home my mum's going to be better off my brother's sister's going to be better off um, nobody's going to miss me and all that and it was kind of the element like nobody knew what I was going through but I was doing it in spite that nobody was helping me <laughs> you know even though they, they didn't know what I was going through uh, just total delusion and I'm going to go home gub a box of paracetamol and ibuprofen eh, which I got told like a couple of years later is like one of the worst ways that you could do it you know and I just thought like I'd, I'd gub it and I'd go away peacefully and he's like nah you would be in hospital like in pain for days um, so thank god that never happened you know and it didn't happen because the I postponed taking my own life because I still had two gram of whatever it was I was using to finish off because you know you can't take that to, to heaven <laughs> or hell wherever you're going like Totally deluded, man, and, and it just shows you how much of a control it had over my life. Um, but in that postponement, uh, I ended up getting a phone call off one of my pals that I'd not spoke to in ages because I totally isolated myself. Um, I think I'd sent him a message. It was like a last ditch, last ditch thing, uh, and he just phoned me and he's like, "I don't care how you do it, just go home tonight. If you need to do whatever you've been doing, just do that. Drink whatever. Do not do anything stupid tonight." And he came and got me the next day. He actually drove up Southampton to Glasgow through the night. Uh, I found that out a few months later. And got me the next day, took me to a pharmacist. Uh, and this pharmacist pointed me in the way of, of the 12-step fellowship that, um, no doubt in my mind, like saved my life, changed my life forever. You know, absolutely. So you, you spoke about um, getting cancer when you were young. And the impact that that then had on you, how, how did that impact your family, your mum and your brothers and sisters that you... So, I mean, at 13 years of age, I was kind of, like, very naive to what was going on. Um, the now thinking back is, like, it doesn't even feel like I've experienced that in this lifetime. Like, it feels like a whole other life away. Um, I just remember... Um, my, my brother's of an age where he understands, my sister definitely was, and my mum, like, just a wee baby, you know, they went through it worse than me, 100%, having to be fit and healthy, and then watch me, because I was just, like, I was so ill for six months that I just didn't, like, I wasn't really conscious. So them having to watch that in a, a, a sober mind, you know what I mean? seen a family member go through that, like I totally believe they had it so much worse than I did, you know. Yeah, it's um, it's a tough thing, but like you're saying, you were thinking, Oh, it's just me. It's just me. Do you know what I mean? Like you're the only person going through it. And I think it's crazy it's such a young age that something like that could switch your mindset into the, you're saying just constantly focusing on negative into it. It's crazy. Because although it's a terrible, horrible thing that happened you're, like you say, you did still wake up. Do you know what I mean? Like it could have been a lot worse. Um, but then, because that's happened to you, that's then switched your mindset for what nearly eight, nine year yeah. you went on, just thinking about all negative stuff yeah. coming for that. Um, it's just like you say, it's, and then when you've obviously started to get better, you've realised the other side of it. But to be stuck in that mindset for such a young age and living your life that way. It's just crazy, but again, and what you're saying about the manipulation side of it, I think, see, when you know somebody loves you so much, that's the people that you hurt the most because you know you've got that leverage over them. Yeah. I always say it, the people you care about the most are the ones that get it the hardest because you know, 
see if it's somebody random or that, you don't really know where you storm with them, but with like your mum or partners or anybody like that, you know you've got that hold over them. They don't want to lose you, they don't want to see you hurt. So if you start using this or that and you know it's going to affect them, that's what you're going to do because you're in that selfish mindset of everything's about me. I, I went through this and like you're saying, you completely just brush off that they've been through that and like you're saying now because you've got the awareness they went through it worse than you because you didn't even really know what was going on yeah. they had to sit and watch that man yeah. but um, obviously you've spoke gear about all the kind of the negative stuff and that but you've completely turned your life around now so just um, give a wee bit of insight on how you came about it what's happened and how you're feeling now yeah absolutely so I uh Basically, so just for what I've said, and then I found myself in the 12-step recovery programme, I stopped using uh, drugs, and I quickly learned um, why I use drinking drugs, do you know? Because when I live without those substances, this head is just on me, like, da 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 da, da. constant. It's like, what are they thinking of me? Why has he said that to me? Overanalyzing everything in a constant state of fear, constant state of resenting people. And that comes out in my actions, my behaviours, you know, and it's like, it's not a nice way to live, but it's like something that you can't be aware of unless you're aware of it, like as simple as that. So what I do is I go through this 12-step programme um, and it just basically, to put a, a long story short and what we'll talk about, which is one of the most important steps is like you go over your full life and you just have a look, it's like, what are you scared of? Who do you hate? And then you go, you go over it with someone and... Um, that is not emotionally attached to that situation, you know, it's hard to get out of a, a situation, see the truth within a situation when you're so emotionally attached in it, you know, and that's what the beauty of still to this day, like using my phone, speak to Danny a lot, and, and there's an abundance of people that I can speak to that are not emotionally attached to my situations, because, you know, I still, I'm so far from getting it right, <laughs> you know, um, I say that, you know, I'm exactly where I'm meant to be, um, but again, it's like this head tells me where I think I should be, um, you know, it's 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 a subtle thing, um, and I learn about my full life, and I, and I and I just get a total perspective change. You know, like to the way that I see people is different. The way that I'm acting is different. Like I say, it's not been a permanent change. I, I revert back and need to learn some lessons going through pain. You know, because when I revert back to that old way of life and I start living and resenting people, fear. It's sore, it gets painful, you know, and it gets that painful that I then need to revert back to the basics of, right, I need to really share my share my stuff here and get to the truth of what's going on. Because I don't believe, like, human beings, like, I don't believe we're put here to feel anxiety, depression, all these things. Like, why would we be put here to feel all that? It just doesn't make sense to me. Um, you know, and I'm speaking to someone and he's like, it's, you need to find out what you're not in order to find out closer to finding out what you are you know and I don't believe I'm depression anxiety all all that negative stuff I believe um, as a human being is to just be you know and like I've got this head that's always trying to project me into the future where I don't exist or project me into the past where I can't change anything that's happened so I always try to take me one way or the other so it's like I know the, the future and I know the past so I've got to be right now and I've found that in my experience you know Every time that I'm living life now, there's there's n all, no problems, like very next to no problems at all. Every time I bring it back to now, nothing's happening, you know, and it's only when I'm living over there, past there, that I can get myself feeling anxious, depressed, you know, and, and I live my life in a depressive state for years, blagging that I had depression. I can see now, clear as day, I've never had depression, you know, what I had was extremely terrible habits that created an extremely terrible mental state and today I've got extremely good habits and no surprise it creates an extremely good mental state yeah. so you, you were talking there is about the, the sort of shift that looking back in your life and you speak a wee bit about not focusing on the past what kind of help and support did you get as a child who'd, who'd gone through what you'd gone through because I sit there and think that all you did was focus on the negatives you spoke about. It, it must be very, very difficult to focus on anything else. I don't mm. see how you can, at 13 years of age, die, wake up in my ICU and, and have cancer and just wake up and, f and focus on positive straight away. It's mm. like there's no amount of shouting affirmations in the mirror that's going to fix that. You've just woke up and you've had cancer. It's a deep, you know, that's something that 
it's serious and and so what offers of support did you get as a child then? So I mean the support was there. Like I got offered straight off the bat counselling. Um, you know, I just remember being in a state that uh, I I really started to rebel as soon as it happened to me, you know, and I'm sitting across with this counsellor and, and one of the first questions, not that she asked me, that I asked her is, have you ever had cancer? At 13 years of age, I asked her this question, have you ever had cancer? And she's like, no. Um, and I just didn't listen to a word she said after that, you know, like I knew something deep down within me is like, why have I got someone telling me how I should think and feel when they don't know why I'm, th well, maybe they do because they've got a degree to, to tell them, but for me, that's, that's not the deal. That's not the deal. So years later, I come into a place where there's an abundance of people that know exactly how I feel because they've been to the place that I've been. They've thought the stuff that I've thought and they've felt the way that I've felt. So if they're going to give me advice because they've been there and they got to there, I'm going to listen to that because it makes sense. Like, it just makes sense uh, for someone to tell me how to get to a place because they've already been to that place instead of someone that's got a bit of paper that's never that's never been to that place telling me um, and this is why your guys meeting works so well. Yeah, that's it. The nail on the head, that was the thing for me. I've been to uh, counsellors, therapists and stuff like that. Just with stuff in the past before I knew what I actually suffered for. Um, but when I came into the meetings, that was what hanged me. So we my the person that I go to most through the meetings, um, he sat me down and he was speaking to me and he's like, listen, just open up, tell me what's going on. I'll be saying stuff and he's like, I've got one for you. Telling me a different story, but the exact same feelings and situation. I'm like, looking at him, another story. I've got something for you. And it was that whole thing, the counsellors and that, they worked at the start because they've got these, it's nothing against, by the way, this is nothing against counsellor therapists. They do, they do a good job and they will, but just for me, yeah. It was all context stuff. It was as if it was like a, a manual on how to fix somebody. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And they were mm -hmm. kind of saying, do this breath work, do that, do this. But then I was telling them about stuff. And sometimes I would tell them stuff and you could see them look kind of like juttering back a bit. And that, for somebody like that, made yeah. me feel a hundred times worse. I was like, I can't. That was only the, the tip of the iceberg, ah, man. I was yeah. like, I'm just shuddering for that. Yeah. But then we, my. It was Alan Sime for No Limits Coaching. He was the one that was there for, with me for the very, very start. And yeah. I, Oh my, my life to him the room what I'm doing um, mm. but it was the ID it was like somebody says in the, the meeting yesterday plain snap with somebody it was like I'd put a card down boom he's putting one straight down mm. in front of me and just having somebody that he can relate to you mm. and, and what's more amazing about it is it's, it's no the same things it's no as if oh I've done that exact same thing as you mm -hmm. it's the feelings the emotions and the understanding and knowing that I'm not being judged whatsoever. Do you know what I mean? And, yeah. and like he says, he's been through that same experience. He understands how I feel. Yeah. And that's the beauty of this meeting. Not everybody in the room feels the same. They've been through the same stuff. Mm -hmm. But that's not the point. It's the fact that yeah. we all just understand how you feel and always are just there to help each other. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. that is, I think that's such a big thing in life. Like just to be, surround yourself with like-minded people, man. It's such yeah. a powerful thing. And, it sounds so simple, but I don't know. You, you feel it yourself when you're in that room, like when you're going running. I don't know. It's just one of the things. It is. It's relating an idea to people and knowing that you're on the same page. Yeah, it just, definitely. It just creates like when somebody's telling you, you know, like, and you just said it there. It doesn't need to be that you have done the exact same situation that fits like that, but the thoughts and the feelings that are created by it. When someone's telling you that they've felt and thought the same way then trust is That's trust it, is immediate mm -hmm. immediate because only if you believe the person do you know but I've as soon as I walked into where I, I walked into in the meetings like I trusted that everyone was I believed them what they were saying so instantly I gained trust you know like I'd share things with people that I would never share ever because it's like Glasgow mentality like trust nobody <laughs> don't speak up this and that and Aye. it's like you guys are doing fantastic, but there's still um, a stigma around it. Do you know what I mean? Um, but it's where it's meant to be. You know, imagine we grew up when our parents grew up. There'd been nothing like this at all, and we just need to get on with it. Aye, so I've been doing a lot of thinking, sort of recently, about the stigma of speaking up, and I, I don't know if it's just my perspective because of the sort of environments that I put myself in now that speaking up is just part of it. Mm -hmm. And so to me, it looks like we're in a place where the stigma is starting to break on speaking up. But the challenge is how to respond when somebody speaks up. Because mm -hmm. I, I used to feel like if somebody came to me and spoke to me about something, that it was then my job to then 
fix them or they're coming to me with a really complex set of problems but I'm just going to drop a one line of wisdom on them it's going to change their life somehow but actually sometimes the response is, isn't the anything other than just listening and I think it's all well and good being able to break the stigma of speaking but you need to know how to respond when somebody yeah. when somebody reaches out to you don't you? Yeah. No for sure it's important and um, you know like I've, I've done that as well is like you can be feeling so invincible sometimes that you're like just shoving this stuff in people's face like um you need to do this and you need to do that where it's like people I heard you speaking about it uh, on one of the podcasts I can't remember what one and it's like the meeting's great once every Friday um, if you're anything like me there's no enough <laughs> do you know what I mean it's like if you're in a place of bad mental health there's a lot of steps and actions that need to be taken um, you know like I'm years down the line that my life has changed yeah it's changed but I've still got a whole lot of work to do do you know like I feel like the past four years have been a place of like I've been feeling brilliant and then I get pulled back into that state that I was in before and there's something to learn. Do you know that's that's how I feel it works is like you need to learn something and, and then you learn it and you grow and you get better and then boom you get pulled back in, you know, like I'm just out of I literally just out of eight months of hell there because I wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing. I say like supposed to be doing, I, I believe everything's meant to be, so I believe I was meant to go through that. I'm not taking care of what I should be taking care of and I get back to a place where I'm not speaking to my family and I've actually lost a relationship due to the way that I am because I slowly but surely identify with this wee fucker that lives in my <laughs> head. Sorry for swearing. Um, I start identifying that and then again, my life so broad comes back to this narrow, narrow thing and I'm only thinking and feeling about what this is telling me how to think and feel and it land me in my, my bed not wanting to get out. Uh, for hours upon end, hating my work, everyone I come into contact with as a another swear word, um, all that stuff, and that's not how I want to live my life because those are things that I am not, do you know? But this makes me believe that I am. Um, but again, you know, it wasn't um, definitely wasn't easy what I've just been through, but coming out the other side of it. And it's like, in hindsight, I can see why I went through it because the stuff that I've learned, you know, having conversations with you recently is like, I'm, I've total revelations have happened. Uh, and it's just taken me, it's like getting to the top of the mountain where the clouds are and then the clouds, the clouds mm -hmm. move and then there's another top to reach, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a really good point you make there about that eight months you were talking about there at Pure Hell because I said this to Danny, um, that I was speaking about, we were getting you on the podcast and stuff like that and then obviously, I met you like, um, during the week there and you were mm -hmm. talking about all that. So this is the whole external doesn't like, match the internal because see, any time I've ever spoke to you, like we kind of go straight in the deep end, man, do you know what I mean? The two is talk because I like talking to you about that kind of stuff. But when I talked to you before, when you were going through this hell that you're talking about, mm -hmm. I would have thought you were on cloud nine, like flying, doing everything right, smashing it, man, like just yeah. cruising life. To then find out when I met you during the week, you're like, and I was ruined. I was completely gone. I was back in that dark, dark place. And I'm like, fuck, that's me sitting having deep conversations with you, but that's you again, just pulling on that mask, kidding on everything's all right because you're in that place. And it just shows that it's that again, um, when you dig into the places, it then, I feel like when you go into these dark places, that's when it then, see the further and further you go, that's the harder it gets to actually speak out. Yeah. See, when you're in a good place, man, you don't mind speaking out about how it used to be, mm. I think. But see, when you're in that dark place, yeah. you're, like you're saying, that he, your head tells you, don't tell anybody that, man. You're going to get judged. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. They're going to think this. They're going to think that. And then you go further and further in, and then it gets worse and worse and worse. And then it just keeps going on. You wonder, like, just... Yeah, what I always say is, see your head, you think that'd be the one thing that makes you want to be better, but for me and for obviously those two speaking, it's the one thing that's the hardest thing to live with that yeah. I've had in my life is my own head. Yeah. No anybody else, do you know what I mean? Yeah. You say it and all that, you're your own worst enemy, do you know what I mean? It's no anybody else that causes the problems, it's us that make the issues that cause the problems, yeah. do you know what I mean? By the way we act and listening to your head. And I just think it's wild, you know what I mean? It's yeah. absolutely crazy. For sure, man, you think the voice that's in your head that sounds like you, you think you'd be able to trust it, man, <laughs> you know? But it's like, the only thing, and again, this is it's just something that somebody else told me, like, unless I'm talking directly about my life, like, it's all things that I've learned through people, you know? And it's, um, 
there's only if something's trying to convince you it is what it is it's because it's pretending mm. do you know there's something that is just is mm -hmm. do you know what I mean so that's like human beings we just be because that's what we are we're human beings um, but my head's constantly trying to convince me that I'm something that I'm not and then it projects out to like conversations we had so I'm having conversations where actually really I'm pretending to be somebody that I'm not and I'm in hell and I'm not surprised because in hindsight because I'm trying to pretend to be something that I'm not because this is convincing me that, that I am and in large part of that I don't know about your experience but for me a large part of that is fear so a large part of that is I'm where I am in life now I've turned it around I'm a few years down the line I'm mm -hmm. helping people Therefore, I cannot feel the way I'm feeling mm -hmm. and I'm not going to tell anybody because if I start telling people that, then calls into question everything mm -hmm. I've done to turn my life around. People mm -hmm. are now going to look at me differently and it's actually... Um, and if you just take that a wee step further, it's actually not about what other people think about me. It's I need people to think a certain way about me. Yeah. So if I tell them that and they don't, I can't live with that. So again, it's actually nothing to do with what the other people and what they think about me. It's about how can I deal with how I think they're going to think about me, and yeah. it's really all coming back to me again. Yeah, and it's all false. Yeah, that's the thing you speak about there. Like, so, way the meeting, see when we started the meeting, you would think doing such a good thing that would make you feel amazing. I spoke to Danny. I felt worse the first two, maybe three weeks because, like Danny touched on, when somebody shares problems with you. I instantly thought because me and Danny started this meeting, it's got to be me and Danny. We've got to fix all these people. We've got to help them. I don't know how many times I say that to Danny. He's like, Kieran, shut up, man. He's like, we're not here to help people. We're not here to fix anybody. Yeah. We're just here to share our own experiences and listen. That's the big thing. Being able to listen and just say, that's fine, mate. Do you know what I mean? You will get past it. Like, mm -hmm. I was getting to the point that I was doubting myself so much. I was doubting myself that I couldn't share my own experience. Like, I wasn't good enough to tell people what I've been through. I'm like, who else can tell somebody what I've been through <laughs> apart from me? But that's the way my head was gone because I was putting so much pressure on myself. Yeah. And that's, that's I, I just couldn't get my head around how bad I started to feel after starting such a good thing. Mm -hmm. And it was after, I don't know how many conversations with Danny talking about it, but eventually I just realised, we're doing a good thing here, man. Let, let stop it. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And what you were saying there about because you're doing so good, you shouldn't feel that way. Like, all last week, I was, I wasn't in a very good place, and it ended up being finding it on Friday when I was at the meeting. I opened up about something and I broke down uh, at the meeting, and that's when I kind of realised I'd just been put on an act because after I'd done that, one of the boys who had been helping during the week messaged me and he says, um, "Kieran, you've been there for me all week," and he's like, "You've been going through that." He's like, "I thought you were doing absolutely bro the exact same. You're doing absolutely brilliant there, help me." And then I find out that's been on your head all week, and mm. you've then been in that because I was in a state on Friday, man. But see, after I left the meeting, I was like fist pumped out the window with the tunes on. Mm. Man, I felt I just felt like a different person, and mm. it just shows that that power of talking, man, like and opening up. But it's it's absolutely amazing. But mm. yeah, it it's it's just getting to that point because. After the back of that, me sharing on the Friday, there was I sent Danny all the feedback I got for boys, like sending me like, that's amazing how vulnerable you go. And the one thing a lot of them say is, you made me more comfortable to do that. So that's again the trust side of it. Yeah. That me and Danny says that we can't just expect to start a group and just expect that. Oh, you open up, but we'll not say it. Do you know what I mean? Um, so doing that, it is. It's a, a really good thing to know that I've helps other me because there's a lot of people that sit there and they don't see it and, mm. and they say the same they're like go and they say something and then they don't and then by the, note, the time they know the, the end of the meeting's done do you know what I mean um, but it is it's it's really really good stuff that this meeting comes for but it can the good stuff can take you to a dark place because you start putting far too much pressure on yourself you know what I mean it, man it's no matter how good something is like the ego is just a great ruiner do you That's know what right. I mean and it's like for me I've found that when I start taking credit for things, do you know, like what you guys have done brilliant, uh, like it's fantastic and you've created a space where people can come and talk. If somebody comes to to any of us with an experience that maybe we have experienced, then, then we're okay to, to then go and say, here's what I did and, and here's some advice. But if it's something that we don't have experience on, we, we, can't, we can't advise someone what to do because we, we don't have the experience, but I've done that in the past yep. and it's worked out tits up for the other person, do you know what I mean? Thinking that I've got the right to tell someone how to do something just because I've came from this place to this place. It's, yep. it's whether you've got the experience or not. And that's really interesting because you, you referenced earlier that sort of dark place you were in and you spoke about the, like the relationship stuff that was lost and 
and we were kind of talking about it at the time and I found it and it was a bit a wee bit about being humble because immediately when somebody tells me oh, I've went through a, 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 a struggles in my relationship or we've broken up or whatever immediately my head tells me oh you've got experience of that and then see when I just scratch the surface a wee bit I've got experience of that when four years ago when I was a different person and the way I was able to get past that was to go to the pub on a Friday and a Saturday and a Sunday and that's how I dealt with it hmm. See if you're living a different life today and you're living sober, yeah. it's, it's a totally different experience for you as it was for me. Yeah. So I can't give you advice on that because, quite honestly, the way I dealt with it was to go and, to go and drink. Mm-hmm. So I think there's a bit of humbleness required when you're... No taking credit, humbleness, being able to... If you don't know the answer to stuff, like I don't know because I've not got that experience, but I tell you what, I know four people who might and here's go and speak to them and I think it's, it's not about saying I've not got that experience, close the door. Mm-hmm. I've not got that experience, but... I'll try and find somebody for you that does. Yeah, for sure. And just the, the credit thing is like, if I can take credit for how I'm feeling the now, like that that I'm doing this, you know, and it's like I live a spiritual way of life due to the fellowship that I'm in. And so if I need to take credit for the way that my life's turned out the now, then I need to take credit for, for all the stuff that I did um, way back then, you know. Like all the horrible, nasty stuff that I did. Like it's no, uh, you get to pick your credit for this because it's good, and your credit for that is bad. I was listening to someone speak uh, on YouTube the other week, and he's like, and he's, and it's it's recovery based, but it's, it's totally, uh, totally fits. It's like if my dog done a poo in your garden, like of course I'll take responsibility for it. Like it was my dog, but there's no way that you can convince me that I took the poo in your garden. <laughs> mm-hmm. Do you know? So it's like. I find that when I'm taking credit um, and I'm living a spiritual way of life, things unfold and it's when I get out of the way that things fall into place and that's nothing to do with me. But when I start to think, and it's like the key word is think, because I I just, I can't, because everything that comes out of here is there, 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 everywhere that's not now. Mm -hmm. Um, When I start to think that it's me that's done this, uh, I get into a place that I just was and I'm needing to, to come back in a condition that I nearly was at when I was using drugs, and that's without using drugs. No, very similar. A bit that you touch on here about if he take, takes you into the past and takes you into the future, I think that's something that so many people struggle with, like everybody. Because yeah. when you speak to somebody about worries or anything like that, it's always about, oh, something's coming up, I think this is going to happen, I think that's going to happen, or it's, oh, I can't believe I've done this, or I can't believe I've done that. It is your head's taking you to the, the unknown state of the future mm. or stuff that you can't change, you can't alter, you can't do anything about. And it clings onto the things because, and you touched on it, which is a really good point, see if you can bring yourself back to where you're now. Everything is sound. Do you know what I mean? Like there's nothing gone wrong. So I think that's what your head is trying to do. It's trying to take you to these places where you can worry, you can get depressed, you can get anxious. Because if you actually sit and you think about, well, for me, it's times for me, when you're just sitting, you're in the now, nothing's actually gone wrong. So see, but it's such a hard place to bring yourself back to when your head is doing overtime, man, and just getting your complete doing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But that's a big thing for anybody in any aspect of life, even people who are doing well, whatever that well is, do you know what I mean? Yeah. They will. I, think, I don't think there's anybody in this world who doesn't suffer for that the kind of thoughts and that mm-hmm. kind of worry. The only difference is, people are just better at dealing with it yeah. well, than me anyway, do you know what I mean? Um, because I've always spoke, um, I don't have any troubles as such with what I used to do, but my main trouble is my head. It's just, and it's something I still struggle with the day. I just, it's something I can't grasp. Mm-hmm. And I don't do the work that you're saying, you've, I know all the work I need to do. I don't do it as well. I think sometimes it's as if I like to sit in the pain, sit in the, the mental dungeon in this head, man, and just give myself a doing. Because I know there is X, Y, and Z that I could go and do, but I just, it's just, I don't know, it's a hard one, isn't it? It's just There's a healthy level of thinking required to live your life, though. It's like the, 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 the message can be let's try and get through our lives without thinking about stuff that happened mm-hmm. in the past or the future, because as a human being, if you want to learn lessons for stuff, you're going to need to think about what happened in the past, and you're going to, need to figure out what it was that happened, mm-hmm. and what am I going to do about it? So, so there's an element of, th- of healthy thinking that's required, and then we're creatures that assess risk. And the only way you can assess risk is to look into the future. So let, let's take take your, your monthly bills, for example. You're running low on funds this month. There's a level of thinking required that you're, you're going to have to go into and you're going to look at it and assess the risk and what can I do about it. Yeah. The difference is that some people can get that healthy part right mm-hmm. and they can 
they can form a plan and they can stop thinking about it. Yeah. Whereas, I don't know, it seems to be for me, and what Kieran's describing is just worst case scenario. It's mm-hmm. latching on to, like, it's that 95% of the crisis I've ever had in my life mm-hmm. never even happened. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just all stuff that's in my head. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, I think, like, you're right, you know, um, most of the stuff that comes from my, from my head is, is negative, you know, but like when people like yourself, you know, we talk all the time, Danny, and it's like, I, I need to have this level of thinking for the future and stuff like that, and I, and I do agree, and it's like, but you can't take actions for the future in the future, mm-hmm. uh, or the past and change the past, you know, like, uh, yeah, I totally agree, I yeah. totally agree. So you spoke about a lot of healthy habits, now, so you might have somebody listening to this podcast that's thinking, you know, tell me how did how exactly they did it because you spoke about fellowship right and that's yeah. fine um but there's other healthy habits that you've got today that help you yeah. specifically what are they specifically so i mean the first one was meditation quieting down the head not even like people think i spoke to a lot of people over the years i'm so bad at meditation my head's going 100 miles an hour and it's like well that's good <laughs> you know, you're aware that your head's going 100 miles an hour, so it's not really about quieting down your head, although you can get to a place where your head is really quiet, which is a good place to be, but it's about just watching what's coming, you know, just being aware, you know, trying looking at your, your thoughts out with your thoughts. It's quite a hard thing to be able to do, but a lot of practice, you know, so meditation came from it. Um, just the, the basic principles of fellowship is to get out of self um, to not be in self is to get out of self, you know, be a nice person, be the things that uh, opposite of to what I don't think I am, brings me closer to what I think I am, which is happiness, peace, love, contentment, compassion, empathy, all these things, you know, it's like trying to practice these things on a daily basis to get out of self-centeredness, thinking about me all the time. Uh, started going to the gym, started doing things like just basic exercise, running and all that. Um, basic? <laughs> basic running. <laughs> Talk to us about that. What's so basic about um, So I got to a place where, uh, yeah, I, I just I've done some I've done some things. <laughs> just <laughs> done, basic ones. I've done some things, you know, and it's like, in contrary to having this mind that's always telling me negative things, I wanted just to prove to myself that it's just it's total nonsense you know and anything that I believe that I can do and contrary to what this is telling me to do that I can do it so I set out to do uh, I think the first thing that I'd ever done uh, in line with this uh, principle was the David Goggins challenge so like the four miles every four hours for 48 hours Um, it was absolutely grim you know the second day I think tears were actually shed because I was like so tired and I'm in a deep sleep and the alarm goes off and I need to go run four miles Um, but at no point losing my main focus which is I said to myself that I'm going to do this so I'm going to do this you know and completed it Uh, and then the tail end of last year was it was a marathon and then uh, an ultra marathon and a marathon with 50 press ups after every kilometre uh, from Coba, Coba Run, uh, and that was on the space of 30 days. Um, really, just in that mindset of like, whatever I set myself to do, I will do it. Nobody's going to tell me. Let me just conf- confirm something. So, the marathon, the ultra marathon, and then the marathon with 50 press ups after every kilometre was all in the space of 30 days. Yeah. And you had never, you'd never trained for a marathon before. You'd done some running, right? You'd done five k's, ten k's, a yeah. wee bit longer. But there was, it was just sort of, I'm just going to do it, wasn't it? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I do you think that's putting yourself? You want to put yourself through that mental pain and all, like to grow bigger, I grow mean, stronger. Definitely, like there is the element that that was in the middle of that eight months that I was talking about. So I'm really, although I don't know it at the time, I'm, uh, I'm in a bad place. So instead of I'm in a place where I know that I can't numb that with substances, you know, like I've got a deep grounding belief that I just, I'll, I believe that I'll just never do that again, you know. So subconsciously I seek for other things, you know. So looking back in hindsight, eh, I was chasing something, do you know what I mean? And, that, and that's like, that, so what I was chasing there, like I ran all the things and it was great achievements. I was really doing it so other people could see it, you know, um, in that, hindsight. That's a big thing that I spoke to Danny about. So the gym, cold water dipping, can basic running, um, all that stuff is amazing, can really, really help you. Mm-hmm. But see, when you're finished it, you need to go back, sit in your room and sit in your own head. Yeah. That, that doesn't fix what's going on in your head. What that, what, 
but I believe you've been doing there is taking the focus off of what's going on in your head yeah. and that's why you've no known you're in a bad place yeah me and Danny spoke about it. If you want to actually get better, you need to work on what's going in your head. Absolutely. You can lift as many weights. Like the gym is a massive thing for me. See, when I go into the gym an hour, an hour and a half, I mm. feel amazing. And I maybe feel amazing for half an hour, an hour after it. Yeah. But if I'm in a bad place, boom, I'm straight back in there. See, when all the endorphins and all that come down and my pumps away yeah. and I feel like I'm a skinny mess and all that again, like, that's all the stuff that comes back in. And that's a big thing. It's amazing that stuff you've done, but you've probably done it. <coughs> to try and take away from what's going on in your head Absolutely. do you know what I mean it just takes away that focus like a lot of people when they're in a bad place John touched on it dived head first into work to take but as you're doing it's the same as buying stuff as well that we speak about you're just trying to mask all that stuff but yeah. see when it all, all that stuff fades yeah. you're just left in the same place man and that's that's a worrying thing that that I think a lot of people don't know at the time like you didn't even know you were in that place when you were doing this yeah. do you know what I mean yeah when it's, like it felt great at the time like the stuff works for a period of time um, and then it's like you're back boom here's your actual problems and it's like remember towards the tail end of that eight months so that was like November to December I'd done that and I've gone through December end of January almost and I'm just like I'm lying in my bed I can't get out and then this thought comes through my head and it's like how long are you going to feel like this before you just top yourself and then that's when I go like that wow man I need to go back to that place, uh, you know, the meetings and all that, because um, although what I was doing was great, it made me feel great, only for so long, until it's like, boom, here's your real problems, your internal problems, um, and they need sorted first and foremost, you know, for sure. Definitely. Right. So you've helped uh, a lot of people, I know this sort of, we're really close, so I know a lot about, about your story anyway, mm. but in helping other people as much as you do, with their struggles, what do you get out of that? So it's like, because there's two trains of thoughts, and I'm always curious when I hear people speaking about this, is is that idea that helping other people helps you, mm. but see if that's why you're doing it, mm -hmm. and you're only helping other people, so yeah. so it helps you. Are you are you are you in it for the right reasons? Yeah, no, I understand that, and it's like going to the gym, and the byproduct of going to the gym is you feel great. Do you know what I mean? So it's the same with helping people. It's like a byproduct that you get to feel great. Mm -hmm. um, I help people because uh, it's the right thing to do. It's, it's as simple as that. Uh, I've been to a place and I've got out of that place. It would be very selfish for me to to not help people get to achieve that same thing. And, and don't get me wrong, in doing so, you know, there's a specific one of our pals, and it's like I watched uh, for the first time meeting him to just how he's grown over the years like that is an amazing thing like there's and I say it all the time there's, there's one thing better than watching yourself get better is watching others get better like just simply but that is only a byproduct because it's just it's the right thing to do do you know what I mean like human beings are here love compassion empathy all these things to give to each other like imagine everyone in the world showed love, compassion, empathy, with all these wars and stuff like that going on. But imagine everybody in the world had these values, like maybe the world wouldn't be such a such a bad place that our mind can then attach to. Definitely, mate. The, the one thing I'll touch on there, obviously you help people all the time when you're in the meetings and stuff like that, but I think when you take somebody through the programme, fuck me, that is something... I, I don't even know how to put it into words. Obviously, I've only done it with one person, but he was broken when he came in and see the person he is now the way he talks the the way he is with his family like everything about it and maybe as a selfish point like oh I'd, it's not that I did that but just to know that I was part of helping him mm -hmm. get to that place in his life it is like you what the only thing better than you grown is watching somebody else do it, man. is amazing. But here's one for you. So before I even knew you, I'd heard about you. It was all, oh, Jay, Jay for the meetings, Jay for the meetings, he's this, he's that. <laughs> and I, I, you probably know that you had that persona around about you in the meetings. Do you think that was a negative thing that could have uh, played on your mindset as an I need to play up to this role? Because mm. you get this in all aspects of life, do you know what I mean? But yeah. for your meeting side of you, it could have a negative approach on a positive thing that you're doing because you think, I like saying, I need to help them because they think I'm G for the meetings or this or that. W yeah. Which of you is on that? Uh, I mean, just for what like you're saying it, like it just is. Do you know, like I was just, I just was, and that just is. 
like the perception that people got. Uh, I was aware of it, uh, and definitely my my ego t- like grabbed a hold of it, man, uh, for sure. And it was was it a part in like why I'd left? You know what I mean for for that eight month period. Um, I kind of told myself it was like a humbling process by removing that character out of my life. But uh, again, I was just back to living in delusion. You know what people take from what I say is just as you know. I, I can't really can't really explain that. No, definitely. That's a good way to look at it now. Do you know what I mean? Do you think you looked at it differently back then? But I, I, I looked at it like I am, <laughs> not like it is. Like uh, I am, yeah. you know, which is which is very different. That's good, mate. So if you um, if you could give the the young boy that just sort of woke up in ICU and get through that six months, if you could sit down with that thirteen year old Jay, hmm. what would you say? <laughs> It's very tough because, like, looking back on where I've been, I've been to the darkest of places. Um, I wouldn't change it. Like, I would not change it. Do you know what I mean? So, any advice to come would just be like, enjoy the journey. You know, I'd say that to anyone. Just enjoy the journey. Um, and obviously, it's 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 about speaking up. You know, I, I do wish. Uh, I don't wish, but like imagine I had the ability to speak up. Obviously, I wouldn't have gone to the places that I've gone to. But again, everything is the way it is because it is. So I've went through everything that I've went through in order to be the person that I am right now. Do you know what I mean? And, and everything that I will experience over the next four years. And then I'll get to that place and I'll see everything that I went through in this past four years. It's, it's meant to be that way and that's the way that I am. At that, at that time, do you know what I mean? So it's like, just a big believer that everything that's going to happen is going to happen. So it's like either get in the way and try and control it, although it's going to happen anyway, or just let it happen, you know? Mm-hmm. That's probably made the one thing that we'll see at the back of that is you're saying if you did learn to speak up, you might not have went to the dark places. Sure. That's a, a big thing we want to try and reinforce that. And that's sort of my struggle doing when I first went in. I felt like I didn't st- struggle enough to 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 deserve the help to get better because mm. you hear so many stories and the meetings and stuff like that but just anybody out there who thinks that they're not suffering enough or they think they've not had enough pain that they need to get help bullshit man mm. absolute bullshit sure. do not put why would you want to push yourself to the lens yeah. to get to the places that maybe you or danny have been to you don't need to have not been to the places and i do not wish to go there mm. do you know what i mean but my kid tells me that he says you need to go there to actually appreciate mm. what you've got that's the way my kid does it with me do you know what i mean such a flip reverse role man but i just want to say anybody out there who thinks they don't deserve help because they've not been through enough yeah. you don't that's just a complete warped sense mm. of thinking. And that's what this meeting's about. Doesn't matter, big or small, doesn't matter what you've been through. Yep. That's what we're here for. Any issues at all. And it's to stop people from getting to these places. Mm. We're here to help the people who have been in their places. Yep. But even the people who haven't, they're still more than welcome and everybody's going to be there to support them. Yeah, doesn't matter how big or, big or small your problem is. And it's like me and you could have the same problem. It could take you somewhere and it could exactly, take me to a different place so it really doesn't matter and it's a stigma definitely it needs to be broke like if you've just got one wee issue that that, that you think is an issue speak about it and get yeah. rid of it so I mean? that one wee issue but can lead to another one and then another one and then before you know it it's a whirlwind and shit's hit the fan do you know what I mean where mm-hmm. if you just deal with it there and then instead of pushing the boat out do you know what I mean yeah. it could be a completely different story I uh, for sure because when you think about Jay's story there I've not experienced what Jay's experienced at 13 years of age of waking up my ICU of all that. I've never experienced that, but I felt what Jay felt. Exactly. So the two stories are completely different, mm. but the feelings were the same. And, and it's almost that, um, because Gabor Matty says it better than anybody else, that the trauma isn't necessarily what's happening to you. It's what's happening inside you as a result mm-hmm. of the environment around about you. Yeah. So both of us felt the exact same way for very, very different so- circumstances. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely, I agree with that. Um, I guess final final words then. Somebody who's who's listening to this, who's really struggling. What would you say? Say, come along to my do it, man. <laughs> you know, uh, it's a great, it's a great setup that you guys have made. It's a great space, and obviously, it's just growing in numbers. Like, I remember the first meeting, we were sitting at the door, and one of the first guy walks through, and you know, obviously, where he's got ride based, and he was like came for Clyde Bank, do you know what I mean? So it's shown how 
how fast it spread quickly, do you know what I mean? And it's just catching traction. So uh, get yourself to Mad Without Men, you know, come and find out what it's all about. Um, even if it's just to listen, you just reiterate all the time. You don't even need to speak, and it's just so true. Um, even if you come and you don't speak, you like I could, you could almost guarantee you will leave that meeting feeling better, and maybe just maybe learn something about yourself. Probably would mate. Hi, thanks a lot, Jay. Thanks a lot for coming down for everything you do for for other people, for me, and for everybody else that's round about us. So thank you for your time as well. Cheers, bro. Cheers for coming on, mate. Really appreciate it. Cheers, boys. Thank you.